guys! Welcome to our YouTube channel, Live with Miriam and RD. And today, we're having another episode in our hashtag Forever Honeymooners series. Mga storya ng pagmamahal, pag-asa, at buhay. Na? Stories of life, hope, and love. Ay, kulik na. Anyway, <laughs> today, <laughs> we have a special couple na talaga namang... Um, isa sa mga tinitingala ng karamihan sa church namin, sa CCF. Um, the ever beautiful, di ba? Dr. Caroline Hanshi Pedro, who is currently, di ba? Many carrying a baby. Pregnant. Yeah. And of course, Joel Conrad. May Conrad? Talaga <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> Pedro. Yeah. Thanks for having us here. You forgot the dashing. Dashing! <laughs> Debo there. So, may kailangan may demo na kahit hindi ka nakasuko. Oh, she threw the snow. <laughs> the yeah. Thanks for having us, RD and Miriam. Uh, we're really privileged to be able to do this live. I understand this is the first time we're doing it live. Yeah, that's because of Orana. Most, oh, most of them are, yes. most of the other guys are Zoom calls. Yes, right? Zoom. By, by the way, RD is my cameraman, so he's behind in the, he's behind the camera right now. So, then since this is a couple story, Siyempre, sisimula natin dun sa love story ninyo. Palita ko, arranged marriage daw kayo. Totoo ba yun? Gusto na Chinese yun. No, it's not. It's, it's kind of. It kind of sounds like it, but it's not. So, paano kayo nagkita? Okay. You, you do the long, the real story, then I'll, I'll edit. Yeah. Yeah, that's the two-minute version. I'll do the two-hour version. So maybe I should just, I'll try Go to for summarize. It. Yeah. We, we knew of each other for several years. But we didn't have much contact or interaction until he started attending my brother's small group at church. So at CCF, we have a lot of um, small groups called D groups. So he started attending. And, um, you know, we had several interactions, like spot interactions over maybe five years. But, you know, long and short, <laughs> I'm going to summarize it. Um, it was really God who put us together. So. You want to expound so, a little bit because it's a really yung, long story. Paano nangyari yun? At saka paano nang nalaman na si God talaga ang nag-put sa inyo together? So hindi ko pagin sure. Hinarap-harap <laughs> 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 na uh, <laughs> No, I guess, you know, there are a couple of things that uh, made sense for us during that time. Wow, this is actually, we were married 10 years. Mm, 10 wow. years ago. It's the first time we're talking about it. Well, Kaya lang ang anniversary. That's a hard question. Oh. <laughs> April. April <laughs> tax day, tax day. <laughs> so 10 years just recently. Yeah, just April. recently. Yeah. 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 It's so exciting. So fast. So, so no, I think during that time, before, uh, like for all the viewers out there, our, our time were good timing. I said right person, wrong time, so not God's best, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it has to fall into the right person the right time. God's best in your life. So in, in our in our situation, I think that was the right timing. Looking back, of course, during that time when we were there, like I had no idea what was happening. It was too fast. Our whole engagement, when from day one knowing Carolyn to getting uh, engaged, was only nine months. Mm -hmm. of, yeah. our, of our dating. Of our dating. Pero sabi mo hindi know of each other along. Okay. Uh, know of each other, like you know, I know who there's a Peter Kanchi out there. Uh, our family, we're family friends in a business circle. No, I guess just to like to show how we knew of each other. So, for example, his family would have different events that would happen. Let's say a 60th wedding anniversary or a 50th birthday of an uncle, and my family would be invited. And then his cousin is close to closer to me because we're in the same small group, mm -hmm. and she would always make it a point to bring Joel over to our table and introduce us again for the fifth time. Like, for example, oh, okay, I see this type of thing, you know what? I was in a relationship back then, oh. so I was quite irritated. But his, so. but his aunt, the mother of the same cousin, was really praying for us for like five years oh. that we would get together and you know. So she was not. I was the. Uh, I'm God's best, talaga. Kasi wala mong parties. Next, nama. Hindi ko siya type sa gantang yan. Hindi wala mong parties. She never had a previous relationship. Oh. So. So until you had him as your boyfriend. Wala. 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 Wala.
No, it was more acquaintance. Like I wasn't really looking at anything. Then, yeah. we, then, we, then I broke up with my long story. Uh, we, uh, we we ended a relationship back then. And then I joined uh, Paul's D group, mm -hmm. and uh, I was there for about a year, a year and a half. And then came a time where you know I was trying to date someone already, not her. Uh, not me. And then uh, accountability was just talking about like, bro, what do you think? What do you think of this guy? Girl. Right, girl. <laughs> uh -oh. what, what, do you, what do you think of this girl? Correct, correct. She was a girl, okay. She was like that. Just to put it, put it out there. Uh, what do you think about this girl? Right there, A, B, C, D. Christian, how's it going? And then she, she, he just mentioned, uh, why don't you date my sister? Like, huh? What's your problem? Oh, But I didn't talk. That's a funny but thing. So this is, this is completely not arranged, as you put it. That's where you say uh, God's plan came in. And I'm like, yeah, well, I never really thought about it, but since you're my disciple, you know, we'll talk about it, then yeah, sure, let's think about it. Well, that says something about who you are, because mm -hmm. the fact that you're a disciple, you're the kapatid of bata, right? Uh, Actually, I, I have to play that down. Honestly, at that time, we were like 10 singles in our group. Oh. So I really didn't know why, but it's so uncharacteristic of Paul to say anything like that. Like, he has, I've never heard him say anything. But at that time, he already knows my past, he knows my kalokohan, he knows all that stuff. So it's highly unlikely for him to, uncharacteristic, for him to say something. Even up to this, this day, I ask him, what were you thinking that day? <laughs> and interview him next and ask him, what the heck were you thinking? <laughs> Maybe he just wanted lifetime supply of happy to things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so back to the story. So that started there, and I said, "Let's pray about it, bro. Let's we'll see how that goes." And then my end of the story starts there, and then I asked her to go, but she was in med school. Yeah. So med school, as you could imagine, is crazy. Schedules <laughs> quite tight, so our dating was so hard. Uh, it was so, it was more life on life. He, he'd ask, for example, "Can I come and visit?" Thirty minutes, and I'd say, "Um, you know, I, I really don't have a lot of time, but..." I have to go to the grocery because my parents are out and take care of the, the, the house. You want to go to the grocery with me? So our dates are very much like life on life. Or he'd ask, hey, you want to go for a run? Yeah. Sure, I'll go for a run. Let's go for a run. So that would be our dates. You yeah. know? So but it wasn't as smooth as that because, mm -hmm. again, she didn't have any relationship. Right? So for example, uh, when you message, uh, even if you message to me in the morning, you'll reply within the day. So maybe not within the hour. But guess how long she replies? Uh, five hours? Uh, you're near five days. You're not busy. That's cool. Eh? Yeah, not busy. Five days. Not every time. No joke. In, in, in defense to me, was okay, it all the time? Okay, that's Three days, okay? Oh. Good morning. Later. Oh yeah, I just saw your text, whatever. And like, three days later. He was kind of like, this is really even or what? Like she's barely replying. But I was like, you know, for me, I was like, I was giving him a chance because I never really gave any guy a chance, right? So just to reply, yeah, just, just for him to come into my life was a big step. So, but um, that's his side, how he, he started thinking about and been praying about um, dating me. On my end, I had been, this is really amazing, about two weeks before he asked me to on our first date, which was a run. Um, which was the day after he talked to my brother, by the way, just for the timing. My, um, my dad mentioned out of the blue, and I, just, I only recently found out that he and my brother had never really talked about this, but my dad mentioned it and said, you know, would you ever consider Joel? And I was surprised because I don't really know him very well. Like, he, he would come to the D group, but we didn't talk that much during the group. and. Um, he wasn't really my radar in that capacity, like in romantic So you're not so what I did, but you know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, so I guess the other kind of love story. Every love story is different. So I wasn't really interested in that way. And um, so I was really confused in a way because I respect my father so much. And for him to actually say, hey, would you consider this guy? That said so much. And I was kind of scared. I was like, why is dad saying this? Do I, does that mean I have to date this person? Am I, you know, I was kind of scared. And I went through this period of really um, talking to God about it and saying, Lord, Dad is telling me when I consider this guy, I'm not really considering this guy, but I don't want to be 
disobedient or like dishonoring. And um, I, I really prayed. And then after a couple weeks, it came to my mind again, and I think dad mentioned something. And my dad sometimes makes comments, and I was like, I'm about to. Anyway, long and short, um, I finally surrendered. I told God, okay, look, Lord. I mean, he's not even asked me out yet at this time, right? But, <laughs> that's what we found out later. But anyway, I just said, look, God, if you really want me to date this guy, okay, I will. I will obey. But you need to get him to ask me out. Because I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm single, I'm available, <laughs> ask me out. And so, um... That was the day, sorry, that was the day prior to him asking me out that I totally surrendered. No, the day of. Sorry, the morning, right before he asked me out, I told that, okay, if you, if you want me to go out with Joel, I'll go out with him. But you gotta get him to ask me out. And then he messaged me that day. Wow. Same day. Hmm. And I was like, this is weird. So I go up to my parents, I say, hey, dad, mom, Joel messaged me just in case he asked me out. Because he was just making like, hey, how are you? What are you doing right now? Uh, I said, um, is it okay if I go? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Blessing of the parents. Darn it. <laughs> Why? No. But um, so there was nothing to say no. And then we talked for a little bit on text. And he's, yeah, that's when he asked me out that day. So. Um, well, they say that parents have spiritual eyes mm. for their daughter's future partner, especially mm. dads. Right. So, ano kaya nakita ni Pastor Peter? Hi, Joel. Kung bakit siya <laughs> sinagest oh, wow. sa kanyang bunsong anak. Tama ba? Yes, and the youngest. Yeah. Okay. We'll get that answer, hopefully, from Joel after a few messages. So, lahat yun sa kanya yun. Ako gustong gusto ko, bahala siya sa buhay niya, diba? So, it's, she's like, uh, I think like we were dating, there are a lot of rules. Kasi, I, again, we only dated for nine months, right? So, uh, but with all those rules placed in, there were a lot of things that we discovered with each other. Because number one, think about this. Um, how are you gonna have fun if there's no physical intimacy, diba? Um, yeah, naman, no. The world's way of doing it. That's, nor that's usually mm. normal in relationships, diba? Right. So, you have to figure out a way to enjoy each other without necessarily having physical intimacy or sex no? uh, at that time. So, what we ended up is we did a lot of concerts. We, we, for our first few days, are all concerts, right? We, weird. Had music. we didn't, we didn't do like any music. movies too much because we didn't talk about it, right? So, the runs, we talked on the runs. So, I, I would say that in our few months of dating, we really had a lot of time conversing about stuff, you know, getting to know the background. So like yeah, in the normal and uh, but on short short uh, short uh, short dating but the the content of how we were dating at that time so uh, intense because it you were again I think it go three hours if you're not doing anything else. So. so we would talk like a lot about different things. In fact he was he told us he told me later you know, some of the conversations we've had I realized that some of my married friends have never had, like, you know, just about life and what we're thinking about different things. And one of his first questions to me, in fact, while we were running, it was our first date, it was not, you know, about my family, because I guess he knew a little bit about family, right? But it was more like, what makes you mad, you know? Like, what, what makes you angry? Something, 
Alam naman nito, no? It's so deep while we're running. Well, this is what annoys me. So I threw the question back to him. So that was the kind of the the, the framework of how we did it. And again, like I, I just want to put out there, I, I really honestly believe that God makes every love story very unique, and it's not the same for each couple. Um, but there are certain pr principles that he, he lays out that I think that when we when we, when we follow them, it's really a a blessed you know it's it's a, it's a blessed kind of journey together. And Curious of how people mm. know, since you're a pastor, mm. Pastor Peter Tanchi, the head mm -hmm. pastor of CCF, what are your rules ninyo for dating? Like, merong bang ganun, like a list of things that you should and should not do when you're dating? <laughs> Bilang anak ng isang pastor. <laughs> So when he says rules, it's more actually these are Shay more rules. These are more my <laughs> personal preferences. It wasn't like dad and my mom imposing these rules. Well, I'm not supposed to be. Was that rule approval of parents? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were they were very they they trust they trust me a lot, right? So uh, I don't want to so break their trust. No, these are yeah. fake self-imposed. No, no, they don't mind. But but I will share a few of them just for protection. Okay, so of course. One of the things I had read when I was 16 years old was this list of not now, not ever. Things that I, yeah, it's, it's a not now, not ever list. It's something like, you know, before you even get into a situation, you need to know your standards for what you're gonna do or not do, right? So one of the things on that list was, I will not now, not ever have sex before marriage because I wanna honor the bed of marriage and be pure in that. And so, how do you now work backwards, right? If you don't want to have sex in marriage, uh, I mean, in marriage, sorry, right? if you don't want to have sex, if you don't want to have sex before getting married, how do you protect yourself in a dating relationship? Well, one of my, I guess this is also, this is not necessarily biblical, but this is my personal preference that well, I want to save my first kiss for the wedding day because why not? I'm going to get married. We have all the time to kiss after we get married. So just save it. And why? Because, and then he even asked me, because at one point, I, I learned from my mom that, you know, uh, in a relationship, usually it's the woman who will set the boundaries, because the guy will go as far as you allow them. But if you don't set the boundaries, if you push and push until, you know, you cave, well, until you cave. So at one point, we had talked about almost everything in our relationship, except our physical boundaries. And I was like, this is so awkward. How am I going to bring up this topic, you know? But I was like, oh. Whatever, we're just gonna have to talk about it. So one day we were driving the car, going somewhere, and I'm like, so we've never talked about the physical aspect of a relationship. He's like, oh, ding. okay, yeah. He's like, ding, like, what? Go, shoot. I'm like, shoot. Are you sure? And I really like pushed it. I was like, you sure? You want to know my standards? And he's like, yeah, what? what? I'm like, I'm sure, because I wanted to like prime him. And he just said, I said, well, no kissing until marriage. And he goes, that's it. I'm like, okay, yeah. Out. Get out the door. <laughs> He's like, yeah. 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 he just said, that's it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay. So I'm like, yes, done. That was easy. <laughs> you know, but what about, I know, bending and digging? He's like, no. I don't know, holding hands. Okay, that's it. Holding hands. No, but then later he did ask me, you know, he said, why did you make that rule again when kissing till marriage? I'm like, oh, I have to explain. So uh, one of our conversations again, I said, well, so I said, how do I explain this without it being weird? I'm like, well, you know, I really believe that when you kiss, you want something more. And so if you don't protect yourself, you might end up doing something you, you don't want to do. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, oh, why'd you ask? You already knew the answer. That is easy. So, yeah, again, it's not like I haven't kissed anybody else at that point, right? So yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, you can kind of have an understanding of where it goes, right? So you don't think it's bad, it's So yeah, I think at that point, again, that's why I say right time, right person, mm -hmm. right? Because the, that's only possible by God's grace. And, 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 because I'm uh, actually very far from that. It's more, uh, alright, I'm getting, at that, 27? Right? We're 27. When we were 27. 26, 27. Yeah, yeah. I guess that time we were serious already. Like I wasn't trying to play around, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to find something now for the heck of it. Right? It's more, okay, life partner, let's get serious. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, I was ready, uh, both financially, uh, emotionally. Actually, spiritually, you know, the downside of it is a lot of small people that time. So those were one of the uh, earlier stages. But you know, I, I guess, like with any marriage, it's just a matter of improving and uh, uh, learning to uh, to grow. Uh, 
At the, at the time, that's the most, one of the most intimidating parts because she had a... I mean, we're not about the numbers of small group minority, but given that she was a pastor's kid, and uh, of course, she had a longer time exposed to this discipleship ministry and all that stuff. So she really had a southern group at that time. During that time, wala pa man. I was just attending... I was attending both. I wasn't even attending CCF. So, which was good, because later I realized I didn't know what CCF was. So once then the, my mga kadi group I would tell me, Joyce, so, kanato sa pinapasuha ko. Bakit? Ano problema ng pinapasuha ko? And then after na medyo kami na, then I tried attending CCF. Ah, okay, ganito pala, kalaki to. Siya pala yung head pastor. That's when, ah, okay. Also, just want to share like a, as a backstory, there, I only had two prayers getting into a relationship, if I was going to get into a relationship. Because I was very happy, single, uh, by God's grace, I was you know, very fulfilled in whatever I was doing at that time, very busy. Um, in fact, my parents never really thought I would get married because they saw me like, you know, do my thing as a, as a single person. But I did tell God, I said, Lord, if you want me to get married, then please bring the guy to my face because I don't want to waste time hunting and searching and breaking my heart and doing it again and just going through that whole cycle and you know really waste kind of in a way wasting my time looking around um, but if you want me to get married then make it so obvious that I, I can't miss it right dad <laughs> I know right well I didn't know about the kuya yet but dad was definitely one number two I prayed a second prayer which I heard from another guy that um, I thought that was a brilliant prayer I said you know, by this age, 25, 26, 27, I felt like I knew what kind of person I was looking for in a, in a, a kind of man I was looking for. I didn't have a list, by the way. The prayer was basically this. I said, God, I think by this time, I know more or less what kind of man I'm looking for, but I'm afraid I'll still make a mistake. So will you please choose for me? And I said that because, you know, there's three very, very important things in our lives. It's who are you going to follow? What's your, who's your master? What's going to be your mission? And who's going to be your mate or your lifetime partner? And I was like, I don't want, I, I know who I'm following. Master, mission. Yeah. And mate, right? Okay. So, I mean, this is also Joel's story, but I said, okay, follow Jesus. I know what I want to serve him, but whoever I end up marrying is going to affect even one and two, right? And I was just like, I don't want to make a mistake. So those were my prayers. So when Joel comes along, when Joel came along, that was, you know, I was kind of evaluating. Him, like, God, you really put him in my face. And, you know, no, no red flags from my parents and, and surroundings, like, what's going on here. So, I think that was really important. Anyway. Hindi kaya yung dad mo, tsaka si Pastor Peter, nag-usa? Hindi. Hindi talaga eh. So, kung gusto natin ang cheese meat, pwede. Pero wala. Uh, no, my, my dad was more on my side. Like, to go on my list naman. Sa kanya kasi tatlong libro. Sa akin, tatlo lang naman. Sabi ko, uh, Lord must be a follower of Christ. Pero dapat growing. Huwag lang yung Christian Christian. Practicing growing, father of grace. What's the second one? I love you, Sandy. Don't talk Second, I go no negatives because I'm Chinese. Negatives. So, um, if you know the Chinese culture, um, very seldom do you have positive superlatives, okay. even in the Chinese language. So when 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 you ask a Chinese person how's the food in Chinese, the usual answer would be, Have you heard of this? Ham ham. Ham ham. It's all right. Not bad. Not bad. Pero may bad. No. That's actually that's actually a positive word in Chinese. Oh, it is? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Kasi double negative not bad. Yeah. It's not so, bad negative. So that's how I think it's more a cultural thing. It's nothing against the Chinese. It's more that's how we express. So we will not say, wow, the food is great. Okay, but you very seldom you hear that in our culture. So if you if you have great food, even you're you're eating a twenty thousand peso fish. You won't hear anybody say, wow, that's spectacular. You know, there's nothing like that. It's more like, yeah, it's cooked well, uh, not bad. And that means it's good. Oh. That means, so that's what I mean with no negatives. Mm -hmm. So like I said, usually my 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 ano was I still have my lola. So feeling ko hindi pa pa sa to. I said, my, my lola's Chinese. And you know, my background, my assumption was anybody she always wants someone Chinese to talk to. Chinese. Yeah. Full Chinese, Chinese blood, blood, right? yeah. traditionally. So, no negatives from my parents and my lola. Okay. So, it wasn't the whole world. I think the brother she was part Chinese. She so, we went through the process because that was the criteria. So, if anybody said negative, then. Well, I know. Well, I know. So, we did that early on. Habang hindi pa nalalaglag yung loob mo, 
Kung gawin mo na, kasi kung minsan, I think some mistakes is, inuna mo na lahat in love ka na, diba? sobrang tight mo na. Kasi then, you try to get approval. Then when you get an approval, and then there's any slight comment, uh, you get rebellious about it. So, uh, my suggestion to, uh, to the guys who are still dating, ask those questions early. Habang hindi ka pa all in, you're just exploring pa lang. So at least you know where everybody stands. Mm -hmm. So in the, and and I, I explained that in both sides. I also asked Pastor Peter's permission to date him. and to date, to date and not to get married. Mm -hmm. That's actually quite quite out there. So. It's like old school, but it was awesome. But you know, I think when we asked that, uh, because we were saying, "Hindi naman nila yung tatay kapag kinalab sa siya." He's just being respectful. Na hindi ka lang ginawa sa siya. Pero iba yung nakakuha ka ng yeah. Uh, here, I'm allowing you to date my daughter. Every time I see him, sir. <laughs> diba? Para may, para there's an internal, na, there's a, it's an approval. So, both sides. So, my parents, mm -hmm. cut the story short. Basically, when I mentioned that to my lola, they, they, they didn't say, usually, pag ayo, they're like, ah, they get it. She would, for her, it was more like, oh, uh, the son, like, the daughter of uh, Pastor Buen uh, Pai, not bad. So I'm like, whoa. Approved. Then I said, does it, does it speak Chinese? Huh? He said know. that. I said, I said, well, I shouldn't. Does it speak Chinese? And on my titas were there. We have the Sunday thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Then I said, Lola and Lola didn't say anything negative. So I'm like, oh, okay. Next step, clear signal. So that's number two. Number three, so I go, Lord, I'm going to give you a chance to after I'm going to give you a chance. Then I look to my right. And I will say to myself, Di naman kailangan na supermodel or Miss Universe. But I think yeah, my term was please ito lang. Alam ko si Ito Jackpot. Yes, but I got so much. Oh, na ba? So that that was mine. That was it. So we took it from there. Yeah, but I actually appreciated that you you consider Joel because he wanted to honor you. For me, it was important because I've gone through a lot of relationships, right? mm -hmm. and sometimes a stickling point or the, the tension point has always been my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not exactly 100% okay, right? but they're not against it either. So uh, at this point, like I said, I was more like, okay, let's get this right, and then there's a biblical way about it, right? Uh, children of your parents and the Lord for this is right. Um, honor, honor your father and mother. So, is. So that was that was the principle behind. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess there are uh, what do you call it actions and consequences yes. for having those. You know, so you, you can you can choose not to go about that. Mm -hmm. Probably there won't be grossly something wrong that happens. Right? It could be good, but if you if you know that the Bible has the best plans for you, which one would you choose, good or best? Yes. Anytime best, right? So uh, hey, you know, ten years later, I don't think there's a single regret. <laughs> yes. what is the enemy of the best, actually. So, <laughs> right. if you're going to have it, choose the best. In fact, that's what God wants for us. He wants our best. I'm just so curious how you came up with all those questions that you ask each other. Hmm. Right? Para, okay, what makes you bad? What makes you... Do you have any sure. regrets? Para, para hindi normal na pinag-uusapan ng mga nalililaw <laughs> yun. Para how did you come up with all those questions? I guess we're trying to steer up a conversation, right? Because the weather levels, what are like the weather, what's up, what did you do today? I guess you date for nine months and you're not, you know, you've gone through all those questions. Like you try to challenge your brain to be stimulated in a way uh, to understand the question better. And again, you know, because our <laughs> because our dates were very much life on life, like you know, we would go for runs, we would do concerts together, whatever. 
Um, and, and we were protecting our, our purity, so we're not like, you know, doing stuff physically. What, what else are you going to do but converse about life and, yeah. and dreams? It was fun. That was really fun. All right, so I'm just curious. You, know, you were asking each other questions to get to know each other. Sure. I think you guys should come up with 101 questions to ask before you get into a relationship. But speaking of questions, how did you pop the question? Oh, that was fun. Um, <laughs> well, first, you asked the permission of mommy and daddy by her meeting. Yeah. So I set a meeting with them. Mm. I can't forget that it was Chinese New Year. So I do not want to this guy. So I had reason to meet them. So I run, like, I think, Moon Game. And I brought it over to the office at an old CCF semi and then um, uh, St. Francis. Then we went there. I went there, sorry, she wasn't there. I went there. Uh, I didn't know. I and then, then got, a, got approval first. Sit down like this. Then uh, they said, yes, okay, you have our blessing. So I went on a planet. So I I proposed to her. I think, both both Aki Giona. Yes. Mm, my mom happened to be in the office. It's the office, so that's why now. Oh, no, man. Was <laughs> in. But uh, they said yes, no, man. Uh, and then when they, say, when they said yes, this was nine months in, roughly. And then, but uh, the reason we had to start to ask the question is because I don't know about it. But uh, we have this thing where we share our Bible verses, and God was very clear with their Bible verses. I can name four Bible verses, but it's not on top of my mind right now. We do have it marked in our Bibles. But uh, that clearly confirmed confirmed that I have asked a question. Would you believe that? Like, look, Lord, let me know if it's time to propose. Yeah, you know, about the boss. Uh, this is my command. That you love one another. Serious. The boss, I don't know, it's a little bit Do not delay my command. Okay, let's ask a question. Like that. First John, fourth uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, so this was like multiple quiet times wow. within one week. Wow. Uh, about the same topic. So clear. So clear. I'm like, alright, alright, do not delay. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so, so quick, alala. So, set past meeting with Pastor Peter. They said yes. I think two weeks later. Yeah. Or, it was so it was Chinese years of Feb. I think you asked me in March. Yeah. yeah. So, we had to schedule our dates, right? Because I was so busy in med school. So, I was really looking forward to this one day. It's going to pick me up from school. Yeah. I had no idea. What so, we're up. The and then I did a scavenger race. He and of game. course, the game of the end of the game is me. Whoa. So we were in the park in Green Meadows, and then, yeah, and then I, I asked. And then he what, made what me. What did I ask? You, you <laughs> did you kneel on one knee? Of course. Were, were, were there flowers yes. coming out to marry me? Or I am not man, but ten years ago, I didn't use IG, so I didn't have much It was very simple. It was just us, and um, he, yeah, he went down one knee and just said, "You're the, you're the woman." I want. And I was like, for like five seconds. That's what she said. You know what she said? She did not say yes. She, she said, so, uh, so did you ask my parents? <laughs> my parents know about this. And he's like, no, everybody knows except you. I'm like, yes. And then he goes, you said yes, right? I'm like, yes, I said yes. And he made me repeat it three, ti three times. He's like, you said yes. I'm like, yes. Okay. Just to be sure. Just to be sure. Yeah. And then how soon after? It took us a year. Because of my because schooling. She was in med school. We waited another year, or so. And the planning wasn't easier. Uh, yeah. Before, you know, yeah. Okay. And we got married uh, April twenty twelve. And now ten years later, no. you have six kids. Grab the four, <laughs> four, five on the way, five on the way. Four, one on the way. But we have one in heaven, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, six. Oh man, we have one in heaven. We lost one somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the that's the Secret. story of it. Were there so basically arranged marriage, not <laughs> an ideal courtship relationship. Uh, was it an easy marriage for the both of you? The first three years was easy. She was not home. I was still finishing my training in, as a medical doctor. <laughs> So I was literally in and out of the house like all the time. I would have every three days I would be sleeping in the hospital. And, um, we would have to go. One of the reasons why though early on when we first got married, like 
first six, seven months, I took a leave from school because I said, I can't be a clerk and a, a new wife and fulfill both duties well. I'm going to fail at one. And it's probably going to be being a wife because in clerkship, you're required to be in the hospital every day. And then every three days, you spend the night. So you're not home. So I'm like, I can't do that as a new wife. So I took a leave. So it took me a lot longer to finish medicine because I got married in between. But it was worth it because then I got to spend some time with him. So our adjustments were actually quite First series was easy. So we go during the group, they'll ask, do you guys fight? No. <laughs> we don't see each other. <laughs> was it hard for you in the fourth year then when I was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. at home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the first time we had school that we were together at home. Yeah. Uh, then we had to do a little bit of adjustment. I think he had to adjust a little bit more, honestly. I was, I was like, oh, it's great. <laughs> How soon later did you have kids? We got pregnant after one year. And you were still in school? Yes. Yeah. Then we got pregnant again after. Two of our kids came years. through med school. Seven. She finished med school in what, 10 years? No, seven months. <laughs> seven, seven years. <laughs> Instead of five, seven. So I had two kids during med school and another one after. What would you say, apart from um, the first three years, hmm. was that your biggest struggle in your relationship thus far, or is there anything else? We could, I could honestly say that the lampas are some of the young life were fighting out of their roof in the past 10 years. I think more of the, <clears throat> I think in married life more, or what we debated more was the little thing, mm -hmm. rather than the major things. Um, our, our, our simple rules were, uh, <laughs> God, this is going to be the next 10 episodes of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, adjustments. Ah, learning to deal with the little things, right? Like, uh, I'll just share one. She knows it. Uh, the first year, like, man, I carry a, a, a little purse, a purse with your cell phone, wallet, and key. It's just there all the time, right? She carries a duffel bag, jump bag, a tote bag. <laughs> she's a girl! I don't have to carry a big bag. She's a doctor. Yeah. She's Everything is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But the keys are in there. But for some weird reason, we just don't know where it is in there. Oh, Whenever you ask, where, where are the keys? I'm like, wait just a second. Find it again when so, you know, can you imagine the newlyweds? Well, like, so you go to the grocery, you're carrying four bags of whatever, right? You're going up to your door. Carry this. Okay, open the door. Yeah, I know you have the keys. You have five minutes later. <laughs> Wait, no. Can you just put the keys in one location so that when we say we're opening the door, it's there, do I? Mean, even car keys in. I go, why does it always happen with Joel? <laughs> yeah, so now, now we learn. Now, it still happens 10 years later. But no, we just laugh. Why not? We're the keys. I just lost the keys, so never mind. I don't have keys anymore. Where are your keys? I think, <laughs> your keys? I, I think as you grow older, I, mean, I know this uh, for a fact that yeah. I can choose my battles. Na lang. Because when I was much younger, the people yeah, don't do little things. All the right? things, right? So. You know, you choose your battles. But what makes marriage easier? Good. Definitely. Having Christ in the center is uh, so important because when we have conflict, we can both turn to him first, and then he will speak to us individually, and then we can come together and resolve it. That's number one. I think, I think being able two. to align the principles on how you... We can have different personalities, you can have different perspectives about things, mm -hmm. but when it comes to the major things, then we're able to go back to the main principle and say, okay, this major principle, and we should align, let's go back to the Bible and align it. So that's the easiest way to do it. I think also realizing that um, styles can differ doesn't necessarily mean that one way is the only way, right? Because we, we grew up in different households and different kind of um, backgrounds, backgrounds, personalities, uh, ways of upbringing. So it's also finding out what works in our marriage for our family now. Like, and not saying, not telling him, because I would think before, like, no, our way is the best. <laughs> But he's like, no, it, you can have different ways of doing things, and it doesn't mean it's one is better than the other. You have to find what works for your family. So because you have to also give space. There's some some too many rules. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. our rules are simple. Um, Monday to Friday. You know, oh yeah. Monday to Friday, do what you want. Because he's uh, working during the day. Sa Saturday, Sunday, whatever the schedule is, I decide. I said usually when you get married, the first challenge one is which angle to go to. Yes. Then when first challenge, okay. So we oh, no. Which holiday to spend with what? Ano, kung titinir ba tayo dyan? Yes. Ano, dyan? Usually, that's a normal challenge, right? 
So, sabi ko, okay, let's just be clear, okay? I'm not favoring one over the other. But obviously, with two choices, it's gonna be one or the other, diba? But it doesn't mean I prefer one over the other, but you just have to trust me that when we're deciding these things, uh, everything is taken into, one of the things into consideration. It's not just because I want to spend time with my parents, or I, just want, you know, I don't want you to spend time with your parents. So I think that was, that was established early on. Do you know that was established even before we got married? We had that conversation, like, what will we do on holidays? What if this parent and this parent? And he said, well, you know, at the end of the day, if I make a decision, then you have to trust me on that. And I'm like, so I just, I had to really process that, right? Because I'm a very family-oriented person. But I've seen that through the years, he's really also been sensitive to the fact that, you know, if there's times I want to spend time with family, he, he gets it. He'll do it. But there are times that he'll really say, no, we're not going to go, or no, we can't do that, we can do something else. And I just, all right, I trust that that will take care of my desires. We're also blessed to say our both sides are family here, and those are not the matter. Yeah. In terms of like, pag hindi ka dadramaan, but kahit hindi ka buwan na dito. So it helps a lot. Makes your decision simpler. So I guess it's just adjusting to that. Not everybody has the same situation. Right, some maybe have it, have it harder, so it's just a matter of understanding. Just, oh, as long as it's not biblically wrong, uh, you, you can easily deal with that. Well, we're here with them on this trip, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> literally, Blessing. for Blessing four days. Check with Blessing. No, yeah. I mean, we just had a good conversation this breakfast, so. Uh, I have no problems with my with my in-laws. There are differences. Like we'll observe. Like, we'll that, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have this conversation this morning. Right? But but uh, like I said, that's a personality. Differences are pers- If it's personality difference, mm-hmm. it's just the way we were brought up. There's nothing completely wrong with that. Do they impose their Christian views on you as a couple or over your children? No, actually, they're very good at that. They're very good at staying away. Now, what may I learn about? I want to impose something on my kids, so they won't. Uh, you know? They'll play with them, but they see we stepping in already. But. Yeah, I mean they they're good enough about giving suggestions. If they see something, we ask them also like how can we improve as parents. Yeah, we had that conversation. We just yeah. had that conversation this whole morning. How can we improve as parents? How can they ask us how can they improve this yeah, morning? Yeah, they did. Or like now. early morning, like, like okay, this is great coffee. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's like, so how can I improve son? Like, it's amazing because uh, what we appreciate uh, looking at your family mm-hmm. is the elders are the ones who model humility mm-hmm. before the children. And I think it's a good thing because uh, it doesn't normally happen with the family. Your parents, you know, Papa or Baba, how can I improve? Because you're always a son in law. Oh, oh, oh. Di pa kanya anak technically yun, diba? So intimidating. Well, I mean, we just did that this morning. I think when you have that kind of uh, model, alam ka naman ikaw pa yung mayabang, di ba? Oh. <laughs> so, and that's a good, that's a good, I think that's, that's essentially how we should treat marriages. Okay, we're not the same. So, not every year as the husband, we're not the same. So, it's a matter of learning to adjust or improve towards the other person. Because if you don't, then it's going to be very selfish. Okay? This is what I like. Ito kanil laki ako. This is my style. Diba? And then, if you're able to come together and say, hey, you know, I don't ask that question a lot because I'm not even Not too much. Not Not all the time. I mean, I should be honest with it, right? Like, you can't, you can't fake that part. But I, I think, but we have the one, I think, because even with, with that, this side of the project, on Sundays, we have couples accountability just with our family. There's not even. With my siblings. <laughs> I'll ask the craziest questions, right? Like, uh, how's your how's your marriage? How's your marriage. How's your intimacy? Like, really? <laughs> how's this? How's you that? talk about intimacy among your in-laws? Yeah, okay. yeah we do. We don't explain what we do, okay? <laughs> Just to be clear. Hashtag for having corners. Yeah, but we do. We do. We do talk about it with our in-laws. Yes, we do. With our with my brother. Um, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> 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 no, I guess the point there is when you that's that's an integral part of it. If your if your intimacy is off, there's something wrong, right? Uh, I'm not saying everything is involved around that because 
that's another session, by the way. If you want to know what <laughs> two, women think, part two, part two. Uh, part two. the difference between men and women. Do it then that attend counter flow. <laughs> yes, just want to plug in. Yeah, you know, September 24. Yeah, yeah. For families and singles and everybody else. But no, I don't want to prolong it. But basically, there are 10 more principles. But you know, if there's one thing to take away from, from this, marriages are not perfect. But uh, we've got in the middle. And if you're able to align with the basic principle of what the marriage is based on, and everything is uh, working. Yeah. Can I just add something too? I think, you know, there's conflict in marriage is, is inevitable. Like there's always gonna be something that you, you may not agree on, but it takes two to fight. So one of the things that we try, and we're not perfect at it, exactly why we've had you know, our little squabbles, um, is if somebody's heated, you know, the other one usually you know, will di just diffuse it. Like it, if you, because for example, if I'm angry and then he, he reacts in anger, he will fight. Or if he's angry and, and then I stay calm, then there's, there's, it can't escalate anymore. And that has helped to keep the peace a lot. I just pray, like, you know, sometimes I'll just say, okay, Lord, you know, in this moment, give me wisdom, how to respond, or what I should do. Yeah, I'll wait when you Sometimes, <laughs> of course, we all have our moments of uh, frustration. So um, that's helped a lot. So speaking of prayers, as husband and wife, or actually brothers and sisters um, in the faith, we're encouraged to pray for one another. What do you pray for for each other? Like as a husband, what do you pray for your wife? And vice versa. You pray? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just pray more. <laughs> it's so mean. To, to be honest, no, I think honestly, you know, there are things that I do pray for the whole. But I, I can really improve in praying more diligently, both for him and for the kids, and that's one thing that I, I do want to put on this year. But you know, I pray for him in, in, in general terms, and also specifically if there's something I feel that uh, maybe needs to be worked on, I'll just bring it up to the Lord. I realize the best way to help our spouses is to pray for them and not to nag them. Because if I nag him, he will just um, reject it. But if I nag God, then he's dead. So <laughs> there's nothing he can do about it. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, of course we pray also. I remember just early on, just to share. I, there's it's very simple. You can pray for three things: so his his physical health, his spiritual health, and his his moral health. Right. So you pray that God would moral health. Yeah, yeah. Moral health. Moral health. Now you don't. <laughs> um, no, I think it's it's always important, even in marriage. There are still temptations, right? yeah. so. But yeah, I do need to pray more. We need to pray more. I pray a lot for her now. I can remember ten years ago more no. like, teaching the kids how to bring them up. Yeah. That's our current uh, phase in life. Yeah. Season. 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 This season. So it's more how do we. A lot of our prayers, how do you do the right? How do you go about this whole teaching them principles? Yeah. Modeling. Until modeling, you have until six years old to teach them to form eighty percent of who they are. Worldview. And and that's eighty percent of the person, but that's a big pressure for the first six years. Yes. So stuff like that. So we always we're always conscious about that. Mm -hmm. Um and pray for how, how the kids will turn out actually. Because actually no matter what we do, we don't know what will happen. Right. So you just do our best and leave it. Well, from what I have observed last night, because we all had dinner last night, we all posted the dinner in our home. Yeah. What I've observed is, I mean, all the kids are getting along. I mean, it's not perfect, of course, because they're young, sure. and they're, you know, they're still immature, but what I see is that the, you've got down the basics, and they're obedient, they're respectful, and you show love for them, and that's, I think, what's most important for kids to experience. Basically, it's not always perfect. But yes. <laughs> they prefer to read the books. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, whenever there are kids that come over, mm -hmm. they want to play with the toys, with the kitchen. But your kids, they went straight for the books. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have they don't have phones and gadgets, I suppose. That's why they're so. Uh, Tasha is a voracious reader. Like, we'll get the whole. She's a good example to her sisters. So. She was like, Mommy, it's about the human body. <laughs> <laughs> so you should get that book. What's the title? Yeah, I got it. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay.
Okay. <laughs> probably finish that last night. <laughs> Even Shiloh was looking at I got a one year devotional, bro. Half an hour. That and that. With what? The whole devotional. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dad's supposed to teach I'm that. I'm supposed to teach that. <laughs> I read it all. <laughs> oh. Done. Then I know that already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we try to keep our, our home rules simple too. Just obedience, respect, and um, flexibility. I didn't know about that third one, flexibility. Yeah, yeah, tell me more about that. But be flexible. Like, uh, we always say, uh, be, be, even though you're used to certain things. Like, for example, let's just use the situation last night we were in your house, right? Mm -hmm. So, not everything that we were doing is exactly the same as we do in our house. But I told them, hey guys, we're, in, we're guests. Be flexible. Whatever the rules are here, adjust. So, if it's not your, your toy, give it. If it's not another, then, because we're guests. So, as guests, you have to be flexible, right? Simple things, like, you're, you're planning something and then the plans change. Because some kids are like, no, we said, we said, like, things like that. No, you have to learn to flex. So, and we, our, skin, our lives are very dynamic. So if they can't flex, they're really going to suffer. <laughs> so, I think, yeah, so that's our, those, those are, when we're traveling, like, we, those rules, the obey respect is always there. We don't change that. Um, but we know at a certain point, for example, shy, my problem now with her is whining. Mm -hmm. So, we, I specifically told her before we left for this trip, so like, oh, we're going to Burao. Okay. What's our room? No whining. Hila. But what do you That's it. So, you can do anything as well, except no whining. Because I know what it's. That's not applicable to Natasha and Ariana because there's no issue with the whining. They don't whine anymore. So, I guess it's being able to address the need of it, each yeah. kid. Could you please? Pray for our audience as a spirit leader. Wow, so much inspiration coming from the both of you and so many learnings as well. Sure, let's pray. Let's Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for being the author of life and also love. We thank you that um, it is you who bring people together and you really have um, specific plans for everybody who's listening here and you know what's best for each of them too, Lord. So I just want to pray for the, uh, the singles out there who are looking for relationships that they would really entrust their love life to you and learn to know um, what it is that you desire for them so that they can go about um, getting to know their lifetime partner in a way that brings honor and glory to you. And I pray, Lord, that um, wherever these people are, Lord, that you would really make it clear in their lives uh, who they should end up with um, bless that, those relationships as well. And, you know, quick prayer also, Lord, for couples out there that if they're struggling with a uh, relationship with their spouse, that you would continue to speak to each person. Help them, Lord, to know how to navigate through marriage and really bring honor and glory to you, even as they respond to each other and not react. Um, we pray that many more couples will be an inspiration to those around them of, um, of the love that you have for us that we can have for each other husband and wife but just bless the families that are listening and everybody who's on this on this uh, that who's watching right now Lord. thank you so much for this time that we can pray for them and uh, in Jesus name we pray Father Lord we want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to share uh, your story also in our lives to all the viewers out there and uh, to our dear here and uh, Lord I just uh, want to lift up uh, whatever that's going to come out here that it would be pleasing that will inspire and most importantly draw people closer to you and uh, not just to us but uh, the very name will be glorified. I pray for all the singles or the married couples out there who are married. Um, I pray that for the singles you. Uh, if it's your will, help you to find the right person for God's best at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, and for the marrieds to be able to adjust, um, to be able to love their wives and love their husbands equally, Lord. Um, and uh, to be able to glorify you through. Uh, our marriage story. So again, thank you for the opportunity to share our story. And uh, we just live the rest of the time here. Jesus, thank you for Amen. And Father God, I lift you up this couple here. I thank you and praise you, Lord God, for the grace of 10 years in marriage and counting. And I just uh, pray that you continue to be in the center of this marriage as you strengthen their bond uh, with each other, Lord God. 
maybe there be a whole lot of magical memories that they share, not just with each other, Lord, but also with their kids. I pray, Lord, that their children will abound in wisdom, um, grow in health, uh, and gain favor before God and men as they uh, grow in love with the Lord with all their hearts and walk in His purposes. I continue to pray for wisdom for this couple of God uh, to be um, the best parents that they can be for their children as you guide and, and as you guide them and give them wisdom. And I also pray for this little one in the belly, Lord God, may you uh, give him or her uh, good health in there and may it be an easy pregnancy, Lord God, and be an, an easy, uh, painless delivery, Lord God. We pray for uh, good health for mother and child and for Joel as well and the rest of the to be, hold them in the palm of your hand, Lord God, as you usher them into, um, into continuing to inspire um, other couples and singles out there for your greater glory. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. I'll make Thank my cameo you. appearance. Yes! <laughs> yes! Cameo. He's here. <laughs> Just behind the camera. A token of our appreciation. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah, this is Miriam's work. Wow. Okay, guys. Buy the book. Get the book. Get the book. Money and marriage. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So, Arya and Miriam, thank you for having us in this uh, stream of a podcast <laughs> vlog. Thanks for agreeing to the ambush. Uh, <laughs> Anytime. We're here, Elrodie. This is my first kiss. Carol, don't turn out to the back. Yeah, he said, don't go like this. Don't, don't.